Okay, let's consolidate the candidates training, the tempo training, the move order training that we've done. Also the pattern training that we've recently done. Let's see if we can put it all together into a nice little, little neat package for ourselves. Oh, it's not over an hour ago. Hey, 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 steady on. Um, let's just bring the night here. It's a bit of a short game, 10 minutes, 5 second increment. So plus one, we're up a pawn because they're going to get this pawn with their knight, but it's equalized when they do grab it back. So the knight does take, we can't take that because they've got the x ray through with the bishop. So go and bring the bishop up, supporting the knight in readiness for any captures, whichever way it occurs. So they're nicely overzealous with their attack. It's like a single attack type thing, you know, the group together, swarming, but having a look at the back end, these pieces are gonna take a bit of time to get developed. So was the attack too early? Is it be they're opening up the white square bishop now, but is that too late to the party in a sense? I'm going to take the knight here, bishop's also attacking there, bishop. Just capture, so we'll capture with the bishop. Captures the queen, and let's just take that off the board. Let's attack the pawn. He's got free reign for any pawn. He's going to put a check on our king. Yeah, that makes sense. But not so much sense as in, is it a better position on the board? Because that's kind of like a greedy munch situation that they're in. So they're going to come up and then greedy munch for another pawn, but does it improve their overall position on the board? That is the key thing. Bishops come in attacking, so a smaller piece attacking the higher piece can't be wrong. Got a check on, but we'll take the knight off the board for free. And so they've captured back, but at the expense. Get a check on the king first. And then just get the other rook off the board. I think this game is definitely typifying the aspects of what we're trying to talk about in terms of Yes, you can do your single attacks and even if you've got two pieces attacking, you know, um, if they're just singularly attacking one area and not working with the rest of the team, it really is um, kind of useless. I need to bring this knight back out because it might get trapped for some strange reason. And let's just push on to the bishop. Attack a pawn. See if he wants to take the knight off the board with his last bishop. Nope. Let's attack the bishop. And just move the king up the board. Support with the bishop. Maybe this way. Yep. Yeah.
We'll check on the king or shall we just attack this pawn because it's really highly advanced up the board. I think we'll attack this pawn. So this looks like the whole whole all for the exercises that we've been practicing. Pattern recognition at the early part of the year. Candidate manoeuvres. Definitely calculation. Yeah. And I've put those separate in a sense um, because calculation, yes, you can incorporate quite a lot of other things within your calculation, not just your candidate moves, you know, so you've got all your emotional content and all sorts of stuff going on there, um, your history, your research um, uh, regarding the position, etc, etc. So there's a whole load of things that go on within the calculation process. And then you do have your candidate process, which also helps you to kind of firm up maybe the decisions that you're making. And then based off of that, you can then see the tempo or the rhythm of the movements. Are you ahead or are you behind? And then you can assess, well, what is the opponent actually doing? Are they actually attacking or are they threatening something? Or are they just merely supporting and um, so you can gauge how strong or weak their position might be based off of the movements that they make if they're doing loads of attacking moves then they're confident that their position is strong and they're looking towards obliterating you but it's your tactic to then your strategy to look at it and say well is it realistically a proper attack a proper attack you know does it really have much power to it do i really need to be fearful of it is it just smoke you know is it just mist you know is it just fog so you, you have to ascertain well is it on sure footing their attack and if it's not then you chip away at it or just smash it down completely straight off and then there's the move order of things you know you could have the best calculation in the world based off of all of the stuff that we've done. It's like this person's left the game. And yet, you make the move order wrong. You know, you have the right calculation. Yeah, it was in your head calculated, but then your, your hands move the pieces in the wrong order. So you have to be mindful of that. We'll claim victory on this one. So that's the end of the um, training package for calculation, candidate moves, and the overall development of our mini little chest for this um, series. So hopefully later on in February, we will be able to kick in a few more mini tutorials for ourselves to develop our chess. Bye for now.